Hello everyone. I'm here on behalf of Vision Analytical to talk about another complementary method to another uh, laser diffraction instrument. In this case, we're going to be doing an attachment uh, to complement as an accessory the Anton Parr 1190 laser diffraction particle size analyzer. So what we have here is we have the 1190 uh, on the right. Uh, we have an adapter kit that is developed specifically for the 1190 that allows uh, vis the vision analytical particle shape uh, Sentinel Pro uh, shape module to attach and basically in, an, in a non-intrusive way sample out <clears throat> small bits of sample and return it in a dynamic way. So at the same time you're doing your analysis on your laser diffraction instrument with your current method you can add this accessory <clears throat> so for the same exact sample you will be obtaining uh, that you will be obtaining particle sizing information on your PSA 1190. You will also be getting the shape information on the Particle Insight Sentinel Pro shape module. Uh, we have the screen split in half. Uh, we have on the right side the uh, software for the Anton Parr PSA 1190, and on the left side we have the um, the software for the uh, Particle Insight. Uh, shape module. So we first did a little bit of method development just to make sure that our images look acceptable uh, while the uh, sample was already loaded to the proper obscuration on the PSA 1190. We then uh, once had the method developed and established uh, it saved and then we can go ahead and do a, an, a run uh, right off of the uh, both at the same time. So the first sample that we did here uh, you'll notice that we actually ran the uh, PSA 1190 at the same time that we ran the uh, the Particle Insight Shape module. So here we're just doing a continuous view of the particles that are passing through the measurement zone on the particle inside shape module just to make sure for the method development the first time around we're comfortable with the uh, the data analysis we're putting a little bit more sample to increase the obscuration both of the psa 1190 as you can see the sample was put into the psa 1190 and as you can see as the obscuration is increased on the psa 1190 you'll start seeing more particles starting to show up on the particle insight So at this point, we're ready to run. The PSA 1190 was given a test name, AP Test 2, same name that was given for the Particle Insight software. And the analysis was started. Once the analysis is started on the PSA 1190, we went ahead and just hit clicks, clicks on start on the Particle Insight Shape Module. As you can see, we're capturing data uh, simultaneously. So the same sample that's being analyzed in the PSA 1190 uh, is being uh, drawn in and put right back into the PSA uh, system. Um, but we're actually performing 32 different shape measurements in real time. So here the results are done for the PSA uh, 1190. It's about 47 microns, 48 microns. Uh, we also stopped at the same time the Particle Insight Shape Module. In the case of the Particle Insight Shape Module, we only captured about uh, 1,600 particles, but yet 
uh, when we look at the volume weighted distribution as we are there we're seeing that the mean is about 40 versus 47 so a little bit later on in this video what you're going to, going to see is that uh, we felt that only if measuring a thousand particles was not going to be adequate enough so what we did is uh, we actually ran it again for a much longer time where, where we did get uh, much more uh, collaborative results between the two what we're showing here basically we expanded the full screen of the particle inside shape module software and we just started viewing some of the thumbnails there's many things you could do with the particle insight you could look at portions of thumbnails you could look at maybe the particles that are only very round and that's what we're doing here you can look at uh, at, at those particles you can actually look at this just distribution of all the 32 shape measurements of those round particles you can also look at the particles that were not so round. So the next thing we did after this was to actually put a uh, filter in to look at the particles that were not so round. So we looked at circularity being from 0 to about 0 0.6, uh, one being perfectly round. And we can show you those thumbnails. There's a lot of information that you can extract uh, from, this, from this where you can actually see the objective evidence with the sample uh, results. But you can also look at portions of the distribution uh, as well. So um, I'll stop the audio here a bit, but uh, there's also the correlation plots that we can actually get. So here what we did, in order to get a more representative sampling, we ran, we turned the pump on of the PSA and we ran it for a much longer time. So by getting much more representative sampling, we did get a particle size distribution much closer to that uh, of the, the PSA 11, uh, 1190. Keep in mind, the PSA system is a laser diffraction system and will always uh, render results assuming the particles are round or spherical in nature. We do the same with our ECA diameter number. You also always have to keep in mind that our ECA diameter number here shown is going to be a number weighted distribution. We can also show it as a volume weighted distribution. The other thing to keep in mind now that we're showing volume weighted distribution is that this is a number based instrument. So right now you see that a small little peak showed up. So by looking at the mode, the mode is obviously very large, but you're gonna to have to look at the mean at this point. The reason that mode is very large is because there is one particle that you'll see in a few minutes when we show the thumbnails that is over 100 microns so that one particle as a volume weighted uh, a volume weighted mean will be much larger than the uh, much smaller particles by volume so that's why it's important to make sure that you look at both volume weighted distributions and number weighted distributions when you look at the results so we keep on going over here and then toward the end of the analysis we'll see that we'll get to uh, the thumbnails and we'll get to a, a data result that's much closer to that of the PSA. So the uh, the story there would be that we would always recommend running a slightly longer analysis to make sure you have proper representative sampling uh, on the particle insight. So um, you could also load more sample into the PSA. That's another option. So by loading more sample and still staying within your obscuration zone, it allows more particles to be analyzed uh, at one time and uh, you'll get much better representative sampling in a much shorter amount of time. So the goal is uh, to try to synchronize both systems at the same time. So possibly uh, the best solution here would be to load a bit heavier 
um, the sample to make sure that you're still within the measurement uh, obscuration zone of the PSA, uh, but it'll allow you to actually run uh, better uh, representative sampling on the particle uh, particle insight, which is a number-based instrument again. Um, let's see until we get to the, the thumbnails. And now we're finished with the run, much, much better representative sampling, and we can always do the same things we did earlier, which is just go through all the thumbnails and identify that one large particle on a volume weighted distribution was that one small peak that we saw. But as we can go through, we can see different particles in there. Obviously, these particles uh, are not all round. Uh, there are some particles that are definitely not round. Uh, and by doing shape analysis, we can actually determine that. We can determine the aspect ratios, the opacity, uh, the smoothness, the circularity, and have distribution. So I hope this helps, and I just want to thank everyone.